most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Tonight's curious adventure... The Body on the Slab. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Missing Husband. But Mr. Wallace, people disappear every day in a big city like this. Such things are really no concern of mine. They're a matter for the police. But, Mr. Carter, it isn't just anybody who's disappeared. It's my husband. I'll pay you anything to find him. Well, I suppose it can do no harm to listen to the story. All right, Mr. Burnett. Where was the last place you saw him? In a sort of saloon gambling house on West Street, down by the waterfront. A two-story house. A very run down. Wait a minute, Burnett. That wouldn't be the place that's run by a one-legged soldier they call Bill. Oh, so you know it, do you? Certainly do. By reputation, at least. Yeah, I want you to look at this picture. You recognize it? Yes, that's the place I'm talking about. I thought so. Mrs. Wallace, I'll take the case. Oh, Mr. Carter, I knew you would. Yes, I have a score to settle with that old rat with a wooden leg. And this may be my chance to do it. All right, Mr. Burnett. Let me have all the details. Well, Vernon, that's Vernon Wallace, my friend. Vernon and I had been making a night of it. And we ended up at this Bill's place. How did you happen to go there? Well, Vernon had heard that it was a great place for a fast poker game, and he was determined to try it. I'd heard it was a pretty tough place, and I attempted to talk him out of it, but I couldn't do it. So about 1.30 or 2 o'clock this morning, we went down there. We were the only ones there. To make a long story short, Vernon and that old guy who owns the place got into a game, and no matter what the old guy did, Vernon won. I was afraid for him in a dive like that, and I tried to get him to quit and go home with me, but he refused told me to get out and leave him alone. And Vernon hasn't been home since then. And he hasn't been seen anywhere since then. I'm afraid that he... that he never left that place alive. Well, I see. The place to start looking for clues is certainly the old soldier's tavern. I'm going down there tonight. I know enough tricks with cards so that I can be sure of winning. And maybe old Pegleg will try to treat me as he treated Vernon Wallace. <laughs> Well, stranger, I gotta admit I'm lit. You broke the bank. Yes, luck's been with me ever since I sat down here. Well, it's getting late. I've got to be getting home. Uh, how about a drink before you go, stranger? You'll not refuse me that. Why, no, I'll have a drink with you. But only one. Sure, sure, one will be okay. Hey, Mike, two beers and make it snappy. Yeah, coming up. You want all my money tonight, stranger, but I don't harbor no ill feelings. Nice. Yeah. You won fair and square, and that's all there is to it. Here's your beer. Oh, here you are, stranger. Drink hearty. Excuse me, stranger. I'll be back before you can shake a stick. Well, that's all right. I'll enjoy my drink while you're gone. Uh, stranger, Mike and I have taken a fancy to you. We don't want no harm to come to you. Look, why don't you stay here all night? Mike's got an extra bed upstairs. He'd be glad to let you have. Then tomorrow you can go home and nobody will bother you. Well, if you let me pay for the use of the room and bed, I believe I will stay. Good, you're a smart man. But we couldn't take no money for doing you a favor. Uh, here, Mike, show the gentleman his room. Yeah, sure. Will you follow me, mister? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I want to get to bed. I'm I'm tired all of a sudden. Uh, give me uh, your arm, mister. No, 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 no. I'm all right. I, I don't need any help. Well, I'll come along just to be sociable. I don't want to be sociable. I just want to go to sleep. Well, here's your room, mister. I'll leave a candle on the table for you. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Good night, sir. There you are, stranger. Sleep tight. Yeah. We'll see you later. Yeah, we'll see you later. Yeah, I'll see you later. Good night, good night. I gotta go to sleep. I'm awful tired. I'm awful tired. Ah. Good night, Mr. Well, got my 
myself in if it's easy enough. Hope I'll find it as easy to get out again when the time comes. Uh, no light, but a candle. Why, well, it'll do to give me a look around. Instead of this bed. Uh, it doesn't look too comfortable. But... Oh. Blood. Let's see. The man were lying on this bed. That blood is just about where a dagger would go through his heart. If the man were drunk enough or had been drugged, you'd never know what hit him. Well, let's look around here. Yes. I wonder what's in this closet. Uh-huh. Locked. Well, that won't keep me out long. Not as long as I still have my keys with me. Try this one. No. Nope. Ah, this one does it. Well, this is interesting. Old clothes. Here's a vest with blood on it. And here's a shirt and a jacket. Both of them bloody. Unquestionably, these came from some of the victims. Well, nothing to do now but wait for that one-legged scoundrel and his pal to make the next move. <sighs> and I guess I'll be safe if I merely sit on the edge of the bed now. Oh, yes, I won't need this candle anymore, either. Now to wait for them. Ah, oh, there they come. Ah, oh, now that's taking all the time you get there, but I'm walking on the line. He's asleep, all right. I can hear him snoring. Well, with the slug I put in his bed, he'd have to be the sleep of the dead. All right. Easy does it. Still asleep? Yeah. You hold this light while I... Get your hands up, both of you. Well, well I'll be... And drop that knife you got in your hand, Bill. How... How can you be awake when we... Really very simple, Bill. Keep those hands up. I just poured that drink you gave me on the floor instead of down my throat. What are you going to do with us? I'm going to turn you over to the police. The evidence of the bloody clothes in the closet and what other evidence they'll undoubtedly find when they search this place, you both should have an interesting time of it. Why don't you kill us now and be done with it? Because I want some information first. Why should we tell you anything? Because if you do, I shall probably be able to get your sentence reduced somewhat. If you don't... I got you. What do you want to know? Last night, a young man won all your money. He hasn't been seen since. You mean that fellow with a little mustache? I do. You murder him the way you try to murder me? I didn't do nothing with him. Maybe I wanted to, but I didn't. Isn't it a fact that this chap's friend tried to get him to leave you and go home? Yeah. And when he wouldn't go, the friend finally went off without him? Oh, that's a lie. They left here together. What? You trying to tell me one of them didn't leave before the other? No, they went out together. You know where they went? How should I know? There was a taxi waiting right outside the door here. Seemed to be waiting for them to come out. Then the guy with the money gets inside and his friend sits in front with the driver. Oh, his friend sat in front with the driver, huh? But you know that cab if you saw it again. Sure, it had a big dent in the back of the body. Painted with red lead. I've seen him around this part of the city before. I see. Well, Bill, as soon as I can turn you and your pal over to the law, I'll have Penny find that taxi with a dent in the back. The trail seems to lead direct to him. Nick Carter's office. Oh, hello, Patsy. Is Penny there yet? Penny? Who's Penny? Oh, I forgot, Patsy. You were away yesterday when all this happened. Scubby got a rush assignment to cover the Balkan campaign for his paper, and I had to leave on a boat to let sail last night. Scubby gone without saying goodbye to me? Well, he couldn't, Patsy. You weren't here. He asked me to do it for him. Oh, Nick, I'm going to miss Scubby. Well, of course, Patsy. We'll both miss him. But while he's away, I'm having Penny Eagles work on my cases with me in Scubby's place. Now, who's this Penny Eagles? I never heard of him. Oh, he's an old friend of mine. Very clever fellow. When he was younger, he was an expert forger. How did you happen to get mixed up with him? Well, he was accused of a murder he had nothing to do with, and he had me come clear. Then he got interested in law enforcement, turned over a new leaf, and has gone straight ever since. You like him, Betsy? I hope so. Well, she'll be in a minute now. As soon as he shows up, have him call me at Shermore 31222. Shermore 31222. Right. I'll wait here for his call. Right, Penny. That's the taxi we're looking for. And I know that driver. You do? Yes. John Hagen, ex-convict and confidence man. Friend of yours? Hardly. Seen him in court several times, but he's never seen me. What's he been doing since you've been watching him? Well, all afternoon in the early part of this evening, he's acted like any other cabbie. Taking whatever fares he could get. 
the latter part of the evening, he's been fussy about who rides in his cab. How do you mean? Well, I've seen several parties try to take his cab. But all he's picked up in the last two hours were two drunks, and oh, were they pie-eyed. I see. I think I know what he's looking for, Benny. And I'm going to give him just the kind of a passenger I think he wants. Wish me luck. But, Nick, what are you going to do? Well, so long, old fellow. I got to be getting home now. I'll see you tomorrow, maybe, huh? Okay. So long, but don't take any wooden nickel. Okay, pal, that's fine. Don't take a wooden nickel. <laughs> I, I had too hey, taxi, mister? Taxi? Taxi, hey, mister? What do I want a taxi for? I got a well, car my own. A friend of yours I... told me to come for you and take you home. Oh, a friend of mine. Yeah. Oh, and I saw it. It's okay. Where's the, where's the door? I can't find hey, what's the address, mister? Uh, the address? It's um, the, the, the corner of 2nd and 5th. And don't bother me anymore, but I got to get me some sleep. Okay. Yes, Drive on, Mick. Duff. Now, I'll wager it won't be towards second and fifth. Wait a minute. What's that smell? Perfume? I know. That's ether. So that's the stunt. He picks up drunks who are too far gone to know what's happening, then doses them with just enough ether to put them soundly asleep. Well, it won't happen to me. If I open one of these windows a little bit, that'll keep the air clear. There. Now, Mr. Hagen, the next move is up to you. Certainly plenty deserted way out here. Wonder how much further we're going. I better get this window shut again so he won't suspect anything. Ah, so we're near the end of our journey, huh? Very well, Mr. Hagen. I'm ready for you. <laughs> Sleeping like a babe, ain't you? Well, let's see what you got in your pockets. Then I'll dump Make you a out. move, Hagen, and hey, I'll blow your what, brains out. What the, Who the deuce are you? I'm a detective. See this? Oh. Well, what do you want with me? I wanted to find out what your scheme was, and I found out. Now I want you to tell me about the man you picked up at Peg Lake Bill's Tavern down on West Street last night about 3 o'clock. Well, I, I don't know nothing about it. Oh, no? Look, you waited for him outside of Bill's place. He rode in back. His companion rode up front with you. During the ride, you gave him ether through that devilish device you rigged up in this taxi of yours and made him unconscious. Yeah, if you, if you know all that, why do you ask me? Huh? Because there are two things I don't know. And if you want to avoid further trouble, my friend, you'll tell me. Now, first, who was the man who rode up front with you? I don't know. No? No. No, oh, well, uh, I've done a few odd jobs for him in the past, but... Yeah, well, I don't know his name. They call him the captain. He made a deal with me early last night to be outside of Bill's place uh, about 2.30 this morning. Can you describe him? He's sort of an ordinary guy. About my size, maybe. Well, he's kind of good looking. If he, if he didn't have a hunk out of one ear. Burnett. Now, what did you do with the man who was in the back? After I quieted him, we took him to a friend of the captain's, other side of town. What was the address to which you took the body? Hey, there wasn't no body. He was just as alive as you or me. Now, we took him to 14 Wanton Place. Left him. All right. Get back in your cab and drive me to 2nd and 5th. Then I'm through with you, unless you've lied to me. If you have, keep out of my way, or you'll go to jail for life. This is where Mrs. Wallace lives, Patsy. Well, I hope she's home. But, Nick, what do you expect to find out here? I don't know, Patsy. The thing that puzzles me about this case is why Burnett wanted to do away with Wallace. The bell, will you? Mm -hmm. It wasn't the money that Wallace won that tempted Burnett. Because he could have taken that while Wallace was unconscious. Now there's a stronger reason. You hope Mrs. Wallace can throw some light on it. I hope so, Patsy. If she can only help in that way. Oh, hello, Mr. Carter. Won't you come in? Thank you, Mrs. Wallace. May I present my assistant, Patsy Bowen? How do you do, Miss Bowen? Hello, Mrs. Wallace. Uh, please sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me, Mr. Carter, have you found out anything about my husband? Well, nothing definite, I'm sorry to say. We have learned, though, that he fell into bad hands. But we don't know what happened to him after that. Oh, Arthur assured me you'd find out the truth if anyone could. Arthur? Oh, you mean Mr. Burnett? Yes. Yes, he's been so kind to me. He's done so much to cheer me up. 
Oh, except for his kindness, I'd have gone crazy. You've known him long, Mrs. Wallace? All my life. We were brought up together. And then, too, he and my husband have been business partners for, oh, the best of friends for years. You think a great deal of him, then? Yes, indeed. Mr. Carter, at one time before I met Vernon, I would have married him, if he'd asked me. Then I met Vernon and really fell in love with him. But even after I married Vernon, Arthur continued to be my best friend. I think very highly of him. You're lucky to have such a friend, Mrs. Wallace. But he could never take my husband's place. You must find Vernon, Mr. Carter. If it's possible to find him, Nick will do it. Yes, Mrs. Wallace. You may rely on me for that. Well, shall we be running along now, Patsy? Why did you say you're calling from, Penny? I'm at a pay station near the house where Hagen left Wallace that night. It's owned by a queer old character they call the Weasel. He works in a crematory about a mile down the road. I see. Well, Hagen's story seems to be straight enough. A couple of guys in a saloon near here says they saw the weasel and another guy carrying a man-sized bundle into the weasel's place about daybreak a couple of mornings ago. And it hasn't come out again, as far as I can find out. Well, did you learn anything about the firm of Wallace and Burnett? Yeah, yeah, I picked up a lot of rumors, Nick, but not many facts. Here's how it goes. Burnett ruins the firm and throws the blame on Wallace. And those who know don't think that Burnett lost much money when the firm failed, but Wallace did. So I was right. What else? Well, Burnett was the one who started Wallace gambling and drinking. Wallace is a nice guy, but he seems to be the weak sister. But nobody seems to know what Burnett's got against him. Well, by putting together what Mrs. Wallace told us and what you've learned, Penny, I think I begin to see the answer. I think that... Hold it, Nick. The guy who looks like Burnett is going into the weasel's place. Good. Don't let him get away from you, Penny. I'll meet you there as soon as I can. They did bring that casket here to the crematory. I thought they would. But I wish I could get closer and see what they did with it after they carried it inside. Look, Nick. That window over there is open a little. Huh? Maybe we could hear something from there. Good idea, Penny. Come on. But quiet. Yeah. But, Weasel, are you sure they won't be suspicious? Not a chance, Captain. That's why we're doing this tonight. The owners of the crematory are going to make a test of a new heating fixture tomorrow morning. And they told me to have the ovens hot by 10 o'clock. I'm just getting them hot a little ahead of time. Uh, what do you use when you make a test like that? Well, they sent me the body of a dead calf. It's over there in the closet. Yeah, but the test we're going to make tonight will be even better, eh, Captain? Yes. How does this thing work? Oh, simple. The body's laid here on its slab and strapped down the way you saw me fix this fellow. In the next room, there's a lever attached to the slab. When the lever's pulled, the slab slides into the oven. The door closes behind it, and the destruction of the body begins. Do we have to, to watch it burn? You can't see the slab nor the ovens from the room where the lever is. How long does it take to reduce the body to ashes? Six or eight hours. It'll be all over by daylight. Even if the body isn't... You mean, uh, even if... The body ain't dead yet? Yes, that's what I mean. Then Wallace is still alive. Well, it's a little unusual to cremate a live body, but it works just the same. You'll never know what happened. It'll be all over in an instant. Well, we got nothing more to do here. Might as well go in the next room and wait for the ovens to get hot enough. Uh, then you can pull the lever and slide the body. You mean I have to pull the lever that sends him into... Sure! He's your friend, Eddie. Come on, Penny. There's no time to waste. We have to work fast. Mr. Burnett to see you, Nick. Oh, yes. Come in, Mr. Burnett. I just want to take enough of your time to tell you that Vernon Wallace's body was found last night. Really? Where was it? Floating in the river. Mrs. Wallace has identified it by a ring and certain other articles found on the body. Oh, must have been a terrible blow to her. She's badly broken up, naturally. But I hope to be able to console her, in part at least, for her great loss. I'm sure you will. Uh, will this repay you for your trouble? Oh, amply, Mr. Burnett. And thank you. Good. Good day, Mr. Carter. Good day, Mr. Burnett. But if you think I'm going to drop this case now, Mr. Burnett, you're crazy. You're crazy. 
as soon as I could after I got your call, Penny. About my new helper, too, as you see. Yeah, so I see. Hi there, helper. Hello, Penny. I hope I'm going to be able to help you and Nick. You'll do all right on this case. Now, what's the dope, Penny? Well, a couple of hours ago, a taxi pulls up in front of Mrs. Wallace's house. Mm -hmm. The driver goes into the house. About 15 minutes later, he comes out again with Mrs. Wallace and her maid. They get in the cab, drive away. With you after him, of course. That's right. Well, they drive around and finally end up way out here. There must have been a couple of guys in the cab when the women got in. Because when they got out there, they were both gagged and their hands were tied behind them. Well, they took them in the old house. I found a phone to call you. Did they hurt them? Well, not so far as I could tell. Gee, I wish I could see what they're doing now. I hope they're all right. Oh, Millie, this is terrible. My mouth is still sore from that dirty old cloth they used for a gag. Where do you suppose we are? Oh, I don't know, Mrs. Wallace. I've never been this far from town before. Could you see anything out of the window? Oh, nothing I recognize. Oh, I should have known better than to be fooled by such a simple trick. I might have known that old Mrs. Parker couldn't be so sick she had to see us at once. Why, well, I saw her only the day before yesterday. No, fooled me all right. I thought... I hope uh, you're comfortable, ladies. We are not. We certainly are not. What's the idea of bringing us here? Well, I'll tell you. Cap says is how he's going to collect some big dough from you two. You mean we're being held for ransom? Yep. Well, how much money do you want? Well, uh, Cap says he won't take less than $50,000. Oh, Mrs. Wallace, we'll never get out of here. Nonsense. <laughs> he must be insane to expect me to pay him that amount of money. Well, he says he won't take a cent less. Well, he won't get it. Never. And he's a dangerous man. You better not get him mad at you. I'll be back at 8 o'clock tonight for your answer. Oh, he'll kill us. I know he will. Be quiet, <laughs> Millie. He won't kill us as long as he thinks there's any chance of getting the money out of us. But what if we can't... A man at the window. It's Mr. Burnett. Oh, Arthur. Arthur, I hoped you'd come. Uh, are you... Are you safe, Louise? Have they hurt you? No, Arthur. We're both safe. But how did you ever find us? I just climbed up the porch to the roof, then over to your window. <gasps> Have they told you why they brought you here? Yes. They want ransom. Fifty thousand dollars. And they'll kill us if you don't save us. Not while I'm here. I'll see that no harm comes to you. <laughs> but what can you do? You're only one against the two of them, and they're both vicious criminals, I know. Do be careful, Arthur. Louise, if I save you from these rats, do you think that you... Ask me later, Arthur. Not now. Very well, if you say so. Now, tell me, what time are the men coming back again? Do you know? The man we talked to said they'd be here at 8 o'clock. That gives us just over an hour. Now, here's my plan. When they come, I'll be here. Now, you each know what you're supposed to do, don't you? Sure, Nicky, sure. You know, this ought to be fun. I haven't played cops and robbers since I was a kid. Same here. This should be good. Well, I hope you two aren't disappointed. But you can't tell about these things. So watch your step, both of you. Here they are. Leave everything to me. Well... You made up your mind to pay the ransom the cab wants? We'll pay you nothing. Not a cent. You know what that means, don't you? It means that you better get your hands up, all three of you, if you want to live. Who are you? I'm here to save these two ladies from you and your gang. Oh, yeah? Let him have it, Philip. <laughs> oh, I warned you. Hey. Ah. Arthur, you've killed them all. It's their own fault. I warned them. Oh, you were wonderful, Arthur. Oh, Arthur, are you hurt? No, Louise, dear. Fortune was with me. I'm not even scratched. Oh, Mr. Burnett, I, well, I never in my whole life saw anyone so brave as you. Any man would be brave when defending the woman he loves. Please, Arthur, you promised. I'm sorry. I'll take you home now. Just let me drag these bodies out of the way and I'll... Not yet, you won't. Wait, you can't. <laughs> What's the matter with you men? What's the idea? 
you. Shut up, you. Arthur, are you hurt? Mrs. Wallace, the time has come to explain a great many things. First, let me remove this beard. There. You recognize me now, don't you? Mr. Carter. Nick Carter. Oh, Mr. Carter, what are you doing to Arthur? Mr. Burnett. I'll answer that later. First, I want you to meet my assistant, Penny Eagles. Your assistant? Sure. How are you? The other man is an old friend of yours, Mrs. Wallace. An old friend of mine? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure I don't know. Perhaps if he took off his makeup, you might recognize him. There. Do you know me now? Vernon. Oh, Vernon. (laughs) Louise, my darling. But Vernon, Arthur told me that you... That I was dead? Oh, yes. Arthur Burnett told you a great many things that were not true. But Vernon, he showed me your ring, your lodge pin. He, He said he took them off of your dead body that the police found in the river. Burnett took those articles from your husband's body right enough, Mrs. Wallace. But it was while your husband was still alive. And it's no fault of his that I'm not dead now. You don't mean that Arthur... That's exactly what I do mean. He's been lying to you for years, Mrs. Wallace. It was he who ruined your husband's business and caused him to lose so much of his money. It was he who first induced your husband to drink and gamble. And it was he who was responsible for your husband's disappearance a few days ago. But that's a lie. Oh, no, it isn't. As a matter of fact, Louise, dear, if Mr. Carter hadn't fooled him by putting a dead calf in my place on that crematory slab, Arthur Burnett would have been my murderer. Oh, no. No, that can't be true. Uh, furthermore, it was Burnett who arranged for your kidnapping this afternoon. Oh, but... He did it so that he could suddenly appear and rescue you from the members of the kidnap gang, who were in reality men in his employ. But... Why should he do all these horrible things? Because he's been in love with you ever since he first met you. And ever since your marriage to Wallace, he's been insanely jealous of him. Everything Burnett's done has been to make you despise your husband and turn instead to him. That's a lie, Carter. Oh, no, it isn't, Burnett. I can easily prove it. Penny, let me have the gun with this Burnett shot us during the battle a few minutes ago. Sure, Nick. Here you are. Thanks. Look here, Mrs. Wallace. This pistol has eight shells in it. Burnett fired five shots at us. But there are still three shells left. And here they are. Why, those are blanks. They couldn't hurt anybody. Exactly, Mrs. Wallace. And the shells and the pistols that his men were to use in the fights were blanks also. And if I were a beautiful woman in distress and a man came to my rescue with his pistol loaded with blanks, I think I should find it extremely difficult to believe that he was being on the level with me. That was another strange experience of Nick Carter, Master Detective, called The Body on the Slab, or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Missing Husband, another of the curious adventures of Nick Carter, which are brought to you regularly at the same time by WOR Mutual. And now, Nick, how about a few hints on next week's story? It's a story of a body which was washed up on the beach, tied up in a sack. And the only identifying mark on the body was one of Nick's cards. I had to solve that murder to prove I didn't do it myself. And I found that the real culprit was the killer who used a clue that pointed directly to him to prove that he couldn't have done it. And the killer tried to drown both Nick and myself when the chase got too warm for comfort. But as you can easily see, he didn't succeed. So, so long until next week. So long, folks. And so long to you and Nick for now, Patsy. In the strange adventure you have just heard, Nick Carter was impersonated by Lon Clark. Patsy by Helen Choate. Original music was played by Lou White. The entire production was written and directed by Jock McGregor. Next week at the same time, listen to another curious expenditure of Nick Carter entitled... The Drug Ring Murder. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Left-Handed Killer. This story is a copyrighted feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The return of Nick Carter is produced in the studios of WOR and is broadcast over most of these stations every Wednesday evening at 8.30 Eastern War Time. This is Mutual.